Thank you, Dr. Malik, Dr. Kamlesh, for chairing the session. Thank you, Dr. Bansi and DIAK team for making me part of this program. And thank you, Novo, for inviting me to be part of this panel. So I will be talking about type 2 diabetes and control on multiple OIDs. How can we use? Excuse me. How can we use co-formulation for better glycemic control with less risk of hypoglycemia? So as part of this is the panel, this session is being sponsored by Novo. So this is my financial disclosure. So I will be talking about Mr. Patel, a person with type 2 diabetes and control on multiple oral anti-diabetic agents. This is the history. He is a teacher at a high school, 56 year old, male, 70 kg weight with BMI of around 24 and hip circumference of 94 centimeter. Pulse blood pressure very well controlled and his EGFR is 88 ml per minute. Type 2 diabetic since 7 years, hypertensive since 6 years, dyslipidemia since 6 years, and symptoms of diabetic neuropathy since 1 year. So already on a number of medications starting from metformin to sulfonylurea, gliptin, SGLT2 inhibitor, rosuvastatin, telmisartan, selenidipine, and pregabalin. In spite of these four drugs being used in optimal dose, still his HbA1c is increasing from 8.4 to 8.9 to the recent last HbA1c being 9.5%. He is reluctant and he has got a lot of psychological insulin resistance which requires a lot of counseling. Now whenever we think of putting a patient on insulin, it is imperative to advise them about self-monitoring of blood glucose to see their glycemic patterns and that will give you a better idea which molecule will be beneficial for that kind of patient. So here the fasting is 220, post lunch is 246 and post dinner is 312 and HbA1c is 9.5. 9.5%. So classically, there is a fasting hyperglycemia and there is a post-dinner very high glycemic peak, both which require address if you want to reach that tight glucose control of HbA1c less than 7%. So this can be achieved either with basal bolus, one precop bolus, one precop basal insulin, but then the patient will require two different pains and it requires lot of education on part of the patient but the same benefits of basal plus therapy you can achieve with a single pre of co-formulation because you know that co-formulation it contains insulin dagludec that is basal component and rapid acting insulin analog that is bolus component so co-formulation one pre is almost equivalent to basal plus therapy so here the counseling was done and insulin initiation, the patient was agreed for insulin initiation and the glycolazide was discontinued and once a day, IDEC as or co-formulation was started with dinner to aim for total control, that is both fasting and post-dinner hyperglycemia and one pre before dinner of 10 units was started and the HbA1c came down to 9%, fasting decreased to 178, and post-dinner came down to 244, and the dose was adjusted depending on the self-monitoring blood glucose parameters, and further dose increased to 20 units, fasting came down to 146, with post-dinner coming down to 182, and ultimately, the patient reached the target HbA1c of 6.9% over a period of one year, and this is the CGM data of the patient, 90% time in range, less than 5%, about 250 milligram, and less than 5% below 70 milligram. So this gives you a clue that this is an ideal candidate for co-formulation to be started, which will help patients to reach HbA1c below 7 without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia as well as hyperglycemia. 
So Mr. Patel, in March 2022, after one year, is on IDEC S24 units. Metformin, linagliptin, dapagliflozin continued. Rosuvastatin, which was prescribed in the dose of 5 mg, was increased to 10 mg, that is optimal dose. Tell me certain silnidipine and pregabalin was continued. And at the end of one year, hb one is 6.9, fasting 106, post lunch 124, post dinner 152, and is having very good control of both fasting, postprandial hb one c and very good quality of life. So this was continued for this patient. So this was just a hypothetical case to give you an idea whenever you think that the patient is patient requires both things to be addressed, both fasting and postprandial. And postprandial culprit is only with one meal. You think of co-formulation to be started in this category of patients because one prick very simple to start, very simple to exist, and if required, as Dr. Kalyan has highlighted, very simple to intensify also. One may add one prick of rapid acting analog for another meal if required. One may advance to twice daily co-formulation also, and one may go on to adding rapid acting two pricks with one prick of co-formulation depending on the glycemic parameters. So this is very simple to start and very simple to intensify. Thank you very much.